Okay, so being right next to the St. John's wort, we're finding another plant. I'm not sure if I covered it yet or not, but we're gonna check it out. This one's a really cool specimen. Again, my name is Ailani Haleski, the naturalist for St. John's County Parks and Rec. And I have my friend Tara Friedman, who's a horticultural agent for the county as well. Um, we're gonna show you this really cool plant here. Good eye, by the way, Tara. Hi, Olani. Look at these gorgeous berries. That's amazing. They look like grapes. That's what I thought they were when I first saw them. When I first saw this, I thought the same thing. And now, you know this one? I had to spend a few minutes looking up. Do, do you know what this plant is called? Is it a Smilax? It sure is. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did you know there are actually seven varieties of Smilax throughout Florida? I knew there was at least three or four of them, but I didn't know seven. So each of them have distinguishing characteristics. So this one has a, a smooth edge um, without any lobes. But you All know, right. I bet if we were to look around, we would find other Smilax just in this state. Actually, let me go ahead and I'm going to go over here and show you this one right here. There's a, if I can get it in the film, there you go. It kind of has a tongue oh, shape to yes, it. Yes, look at that. And you yep. know what this mottled color that's called? No. It's called variegation on the leaf. Okay, which causes that? It's just a natural variation in the leaf, but it makes it very easy to identify. Yes. So I know them as cat's claw briar, green briar, bull briar. I mean, there's a bunch of them. And the interesting thing about this, here's another one I'm going to show you coming up right here. Here is the... Um, extended part that's growing and i know that you can pop this off because i actually collect these all the time they taste just like green beans so you can pop this off the new growth the succulent part and it's very wet you can see if i squeeze it the water just comes right out of it um, tastes just like green beans the deer love to eat them most most of the creatures around here if they can reach them they like them and as well as the berries now i've never eaten the berries but i hear that they can be edible as well but not at this stage of course they have to get a they turn actually almost like a blackish color like purplish black almost oh yes yep. they're, they're very beautiful here's a better shot of the foliage that goes with the smilax that's awesome now it's hard as heck to get these out of your yard oh yeah there's a bunch of berries up there and they grow um, by these tendrils they do just they hold on to just there. about everything they grow up just about everything and in florida because florida is meant to be the lightning capital of the world hence it burns these get burnt down and will reproduce food so they're an amazing food source for your for your uh your deer and your other animals in the area but they can be a hindrance for you in your yard um so but they're pretty cool little little plants i hear the roots also can be really beneficial towards sunburn and oh, really? yep and rashes and also um, they say that you can take the root ball and mash it up into almost like a bread wow. you can dry it out and make it like a bread it's pretty neat it so. is very interesting how many wild edibles and medicinal plants we have in our own backyard as well as how many of the plants we see in our in our woods and wetlands that would actually make great landscape plants yes that's true i don't know if this one would make the best landscape plant but it's still a beneficial plant i agree yep all right. Thanks. Thanks, Tara. Let's learn our plants.